Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. So again, in this familiar time, in what's called our penitential rite, in the quiet, we think of any wrongdoing, any sins that we've committed, and tell Jesus about them in our heart and apologize for them. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. And in this time of quiet, we do just like the priest asked. We pray in our heart and think of who we want to offer this Mass for, for what intention. Name that person or persons or cause to Jesus now in the silence. Almighty, ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days when, by your gift, we have known it more fully, so that those you have freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is, the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. Who had, come from who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is this prophet saying this? About himself or about someone else? 
Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Isotus and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The Word of the Lord. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed are God, you peoples. Loudly sound his praise. He has given life to our souls, and he has not let our feet slip. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God while I declare what he has done for me. When I appealed to him in my words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed be God who refused me not my prayer or his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the father, except the one who is from God, he has seen the father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Jesus reminds us this morning, this day, it is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. They shall all be taught by God. All right, some of you know this song especially when you were a littler, but just sing with me if the best you can. I know it's hard with the mass, but Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. 
Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. The Bible, the scriptures, the word of God. It's a beautiful gift that God has left for us, this touchstone to come back to, to know really the truth of salvation, of who God is and who the Trinity is and what he desires of us, what leads us to heaven. Some people make the Bible into an acronym. They break up the letters and make them stand for a different word. And they take Bible and they say it's the basic instruction before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction before leaving earth. It's God teaching us how to be. But if you've ever picked up the Bible, sometimes it can be a daunting task. If you open it up, sometimes you look at a gospel and I can understand that, or you can open it up to Leviticus or some other book in Isaiah, like the Philip the eunuch in the first reading today. say, I don't know what this means. Who are these people and characters and what are they talking about? What's happening? Boys and girls, the Bible is a great gift. It was inspired by the Holy Spirit. He wrote through different authors, right? And in the Catholic Church, all these different texts, both in the Jewish religion and the Christian religion, which make our Christian Bible. But it's hard to understand sometimes. And this first reading today explains that, right? Philip says, he's reading Isaiah. Um, sorry, I'm getting my names confused. Sorry, the eunuch from Ethiopia is not named Philip, sorry. But he's reading Isaiah and he doesn't understand it. And what happens, brothers and sisters, and I love this passage, Philip, an apostle, feels the Holy Spirit. God actually puts on his heart, he's attentive to what's happening in his inside, in his love, and he can feel the impulse, the drive of the Holy Spirit, run up to that chariot and go talk to that man. Now sometimes, we may not have felt that, but other times maybe you felt that where I should like talk to this classmate or my little brother could really, I don't know, I should go over and play with him or maybe my mom needs some help in the kitchen, right? It could be to motivate us to do something merciful or loving, a charitable act. It could also be the Holy Spirit actually leading us into conversation or he puts onto our heart someone we're worried about. Remember at the beginning of mass today when I said, let us pray? And what did I ask you to do? I said, in the silent moment now, think of for whom you're praying. Who's God put on your heart today? And sometimes we can have a blank stare like, oh, I don't know, Father, nothing's coming to me. I just, I don't know. I just had my breakfast, just started school. But sometimes, mysteriously, somebody comes into our heart that's very obvious, my mom or my dad or my friend or my teacher. And sometimes it'll be somebody different. Maybe it's a classmate that moved away and all of a sudden God puts them on your heart or it's your neighbor who just moved into the neighborhood who you don't know very well. See, God does that because the Holy Spirit's in us and he's moving. And if, we're listen, if we listen and we're open to him, he might be telling us, go talk to this person, go share Jesus with this person through your loving actions, through listening to them, to telling them about Jesus, to even explaining to them who Jesus is from the Bible. Because a lot of people, they don't get to have a Catholic education or really good families that desire faith for their kids. They don't know the Bible. If they just pick it up, they can't understand it. That's what Philip says, do you understand what you're reading? And what does the eunuch says? He says, how can I unless someone instructs me? See, even though God gave us the Bible, this is gonna be amazing, but the Bible's not enough. He gives the gift of the Holy Spirit to build up a community, an assembly, a church, the Catholic Church, to authentically understand and carry out and interpret the scriptures, to pass it on, to explain it from generation to generation, from lived experience, not just book learning, but people who have prayed with the Bible, understand the Bible, because they've met Jesus in their heart. And so Philip begins to talk to the eunuch from Ethiopia and explains all the scriptures. And it's not enough just to understand the Bible, right? That's great, that helps us in our relationship with Jesus. But then the eunuch wants to do something, a ritual, a sacrament, baptism. All this talking about Jesus has stirred up the heart of this eunuch and now he wants to have his sins forgiven. He wants to become a son of God. He wants to be one with God himself in the church. And so Philip leads this eunuch to the waters nearby and baptizes him. He becomes a Christian. 
Brothers and sisters, I love this passage because it shows us all the different steps to what we evangelization, to bring good news to other people. It begins first by listening in our heart to the Holy Spirit, right? Who is God putting on our heart today to have a special care for, to pray for, to remember, to befriend, to help? And then the Holy Spirit also gives us the scriptures that we can learn from and be taught from through our teachers in our classrooms, especially from our parents at home and from the priests and from the saints and from the whole church. We have all these different people for all these generations who teach us, who are God teaching us through them what the truth of the faith is. And then there's the Holy Spirit, right, that leads us to explain not only who Jesus is but to lead people into the church through sacraments, like baptism. And second graders, what are you gonna be receiving very soon? First communion, another sacrament of initiation, coming into relationship with Jesus to receive him at this mass, the bread of life. So boys and girls, three different steps, all led by the Holy Spirit. Who's God asking us to talk to about Jesus? Where do we find Jesus to explain to other people? How do we lead them into that deep sacramental communion with Jesus? Holy Spirit leads us all the time because why? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. May the Lord be blessed, amen. Together, brothers and sisters, we stand and offer up what's called the universal prayer of our church, praying for the whole world's needs and for our local community. Having heard the word of the Lord, let us come to him with our needs and intentions. For the church, may the grace found in the sacraments and the holy word help all of us draw closer to the abundant mercy of God's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our government leaders, may the Holy Spirit help them be attentive to his prophetic message. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who know bodily or spiritual hunger, may God's providence bring them relief and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Christ the King community, May the gifts of God's word in the Eucharist nourish us and make us grow in holiness. And may all of our second graders be prepared well to make their first holy communion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions and concerns we hold in our hearts. And for all those who have died, may Jesus the living bread raise them to eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you and your Son have bestowed upon us the Holy Spirit that forms your church, that inspired sacred scripture, that makes the sacraments happen. We ask you to fill us with that Holy Spirit so we might be agents of evangelization and of your love in the world. And we ask you to hear these prayers to so our one Savior, your Son, Christ our Lord, amen. Please be seated. The masses celebrated here today at Christ the King are offered for the following intentions. This mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Paul Sieper, and our afternoon mass today is offered for the repose of the souls of Clarence and Helen Mattia. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, an integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down upon them, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, then bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. Christ died for all, that those who live may live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and is risen. Alleluia. There may be many reasons why we may not be able to receive sacramental communion. Maybe we didn't fast the hour before mass. Maybe we are in mortal sin we haven't confessed yet and been forgiven for. Maybe we haven't made our first communion yet. So this prayer of spiritual communion is a wonderful prayer to learn on those occasions. And so we pray that now, especially with all those who cannot join us even for mass, who are watching from their homes or listening on the radio. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, boys and girls, I want you to think in this time of Holy Communion, who's been a Philip in your life? It's like Philip helped the eunuch to come to Jesus to understand the Bible, to bring him to baptism. Who's taught you about Jesus? Who are your teachers in school, your parents at home, grandparents, uncles, aunts, godparents? other parishioners, other classmates? Who's been a Paul to you and led you to an understanding of scripture, led you closer to Jesus and give gratitude for them? Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and you will not thirst. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Thanks so much to all of you for being at Mass today and for all of us watching from their homes or listening on the radio. Second graders, it's just a little over a week. You'll be making your first communion, so a lot to get excited for, to receive that special sacrament of Jesus for the first time and many times thereafter. The Lord be with you. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. He is weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so.